Well, here we are, empty parking lot. I wonder why, oh yeah, it's a snow day. But, my chem kids, it's gonna be a video day, so you get to watch about reference table G. So here we go. So, even though you have a snow day like you saw, this is video day for you, and this is a really pretty cool table. This is solubility table G. Great table, practical applications, it's really good. So, for this table, it's really how much solute can a solvent dissolve in 100 grams of water at a specific temperature. So, there it is. How much solute can a solvent hold in 100 grams of water at a given temperature? And we're mainly going to talk about solids, solid solutes in solvent, and gases. So, we have solids and gases, the solubility of them, in 100 grams of water at a given temperature. This is reference table G solubility curves at standard pressure. So the big deal about this, on the y-axis, like I said before, these solutes are dissolved in 100 grams of water. That's the first thing. 100 grams of water are all dissolved in, and in the x-axis, it's temperature, and it's going from 0 to 100 degrees temp. Now, if you look at this reference table G, the majority of these solutes are ionic compounds. Ki, NaNO3, KNO3, NH4Cl, KCl, KClO3, NaCl. So they're ionic compounds, and they're put in water, and they dissolve, but we have to figure out how much of them can dissolve in 100 grams of water at a specific temperature? There are some lines that go down. There are three lines that go down. HCl, SO2, and NH3. And we're going to talk about those first. Why would those lines go down when everybody else is going up? So if the line goes down, it means it's less soluble in water, whatever those are. So, the big deal is this. You know that O2 is a gas. It's oxygen. And it's a nonpolar gas. And you know if you try to put O2 in water, H2O is a polar molecule. And usually, polar and nonpolar don't mix very well. Okay? So, if you're a lake trout in Seneca Lake in the summertime, and it's really hot outside, if you were fishing, you would fish for those lake trout, put your lure or whatever you have down at the bottom. Two reasons. First of all, fish breathe dissolved O2. Well, why aren't they at the surface? Because at the surface, there's very little pressure at the surface, and the temperature is much warmer. And think about a pop bottle. CO2 is nonpolar. It doesn't want to be in the pop, which is mostly made of water. So how do they keep the fizz or the CO2 in the pop? Well, they keep the cap on very tight, and they put it in the fridge. That will keep the CO2 gas in the liquid. Not a long time, but enough time. So that's the same type of thing that's going on with the fish breathing dissolved O2. So the best place to find a lot of dissolved O2 is at the bottom. Two reasons. Because the pressure is high, like screwing on a cap for the soda, and the temperature's cold, like putting it in the fridge. So, the solubility of a gas in a liquid, to keep it soluble, you need high pressure and low temperature. 
So that means the warmer the temperature gets, the less soluble the gas. So look, I have HCl, NH3, and SO2. All three of them are decreasing solubility as the temperature increases. So those three must be gases because their solubility is decreasing. So if you have your reference table G out, you should be labeling HCl, gas, NH3, gas, SO2, gas. And then in this far upper left corner, the solubility of a gas in a liquid increases with a pressure increase and a temperature decrease. So if the temperature is going up, like I said, the gases in 100 grams of water will decrease in solubility. So that's why those three lines go down and you must know that they are gases. Now, like I said before, the majority of these solutes increase as temperature increases. That's because they're ionic compounds and that just means for a solid, this. That just means the solubility of a solid in a liquid increases as the temp increases. So you can see the majority of the lines go up, they're ionic compounds, and they're more soluble as the temperature goes up. Now, how do we use this chart? Well, the easiest way is to remember this. The first thing you have to look at in the question is, is it dissolved in 100 grams of water? If it's not dissolved in 100 grams of water, you got to do something. But let's just say this. How many grams of KNO3 can be dissolved in 100 grams of water at 60 degrees C. So, the first thing you do, when they give you temperature, shoot over to temperature. So I go over to 60, which is right there. Now, the next thing I do is, it's 100 grams of water, so we're good. And then I find the line KNO3 is right there. So, go up, 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 until you hit that line. Now, once you're on that line, any point on the line means it's holding as much as it can. So that means it's saturated. So, question, how many grams of KNO3 at 100 grams of water at 60 degrees C can it hold? Well, there's the line. It's about right there. So your answer is about 105 grams it can hold. Okay, so that's 105 grams. hundred and five grams it can hold. Now watch, if that were dissolved in 50 grams of water, I'd have to cut the hundred and five in half. If it were dissolved in 200 grams of water, I would double it to 210. So the amount of water is super important. And if the point is on the line, if the point is on the line, that means it's saturated. If it's below the line, like if it's here, that's 60 degrees in 100 grams of water, but I only give you 90 grams. So you go up to 90, you put a dot there, and you go, whoa, that's below the KNO3 line. If the point is below the KNO3 line, it's unsaturated. Well, how much more would I need to saturate it at 60 degrees C? Well, if I gave you 90, there's 10. You need 15 more grams of KNO3 to saturate it. Everybody understand that? So if the point's on the line, it's saturated. Below the line, it's unsaturated. And if it's above the line, it's super saturated. So let's do a couple more problems. All right, now, this question. I want to know which solute on here is the most concentrated, if you put it in 100 grams of water, at 
10 degrees C. You do the same thing. So you go over to 10, 10's right there, and you go up, 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 and there, right there. So Ki is the most concentrated or the most soluble, I mean the same thing, most concentrated and most soluble in 100 grams of water at 10 degrees C. At 10 degrees C, Ki can hold about 135 grams. All right, so if you go to the top of the chart, you can write down most soluble, most concentrated. That's what the top means. So let's change this a little bit. Let's change this. Let's just say Let's just say which solute is the least concentrated at 10 degrees C and 100 grams of water. Well, there's our 100 grams of water. We're good with that. There's 10 degrees. Now, if it's least concentrated or least soluble, it's the lowest. And there it is right there. So, it is KClO3 would be the least soluble or the most dilute solution at 10 degrees C. So at the bottom of the chart, that will be least concentrated, least soluble. So up here, most concentrated, most soluble. Down here, least concentrated, least soluble. Okay? Now, Another question you could ask or answer is, which solute basically doesn't change very much from freezing zero degrees to boiling 100 degrees? Well, you look on your chart, and there it is right there. So NaCl changes the least. It only changes two grams from freezing to boiling. And then other questions would be, which line segment increases the most between, let's just say, 40 and 60 degrees C. Well, if it changes the most, you gotta go up, look at this one. This one starts at 65, and it goes to 105. So that looks like it changes most dramatically between 40 and 60 degrees. So there's all sorts of questions, but remember what you have to do you have to make sure it says in 100 grams of water. And one more time, if the point is on the line, that means it's all it can hold at that temperature and that amount of water, it's saturated. Above the line is super saturated and below the line is unsaturated. Remember, for gases, as the temperature goes up, their solubility goes down. And for solids, as the temperature goes up, usually their solubility goes up also. So that is reference table G, and we will do reference table F tomorrow if we have a snow day again. All right, that's it.